Okay, welcome back. It's Digitrack's dad, and uh, tonight I'm going to cover off the Wago 221 series of compact splicing connector, and uh, that's these guys here with the orange tabs. Um, these were pointed out to me, this style of connector, on RN Web. Uh, so thanks, uh, thanks for that, and I'll post a link to this video on that uh, on that particular thread. And it's just a way of splicing or making a common connection between two, three, or up to five wires, and uh, very, very easy. Snap together. I've done some wiring where I've soldered it to terminal strips and so on, but these are an industry uh, standard uh, piece of kit. Wago is a, a German company. And these are often used in the oil and gas industry for uh, making making common connections. Really simple snap lock, um, if you can see here. So these snap down to hold a wire in place, lift up to uh, remove or to insert a wire. So we'll have a bit of a play with those. Um, interestingly, they're rated uh, between a 24 uh, American wire gauge right up to uh, a, a wire gauge 12, which is more than what we uh, need for our usual model railway type usage, so that's really good. And um, up to 450 volts or 32 amps, so of course nothing that we are uh, hopefully seeing on our model railways anyway. Interestingly too, they've got a test port, so once you've got your wires connected, you can take your uh, multimeter probe, stick it in there and, and take a reading, or stick it in the other side there and uh, check that you've got a uh, connection right through. Okay, so let's get stripping on some wires and uh, let's see how to use these. So to get started, let's get ourselves a test lead here, trim that to size, like so, and then strip using the uh, ratchet strippers, like so. Twist up the wire there. Do the same on the green one, place it in the stripper, strip, twist it together. Let's take one of our um, three uh, pole units here. Let's just open up these two outer ones. You can see, quite simple to, to open up. And then let's take our green, put our green on the right, like so. Put our red wire into the terminal block, snap it closed, and you can see in here that the actual wire itself, so the clear plastic makes it very easy to see that you've got the wire all the way in. You can see how much insulation you've got, that you've got a safe connection, and that's a nice tight, very tight fit. I mean, I can't pull that apart. Now, let's just check that we've got continuity with that by using our trusty multimeter. Okay, let's set our multimeter to the ohm setting or resistance. And we take our probes, as we can see, currently it's showing that there is an infinite amount of resistance because the two probes are not touching. When we touch our probes together, we get zero resistance which means the current is flowing uh, through these probes here. So, multimeter is working fine. Let's, um, let's hook up our jumper lead. And um, when we hook this up, we're expecting this to show there's no resistance because this terminal block is it's joining those green and red wires together. So it's got a common, basically, bar through there or bus that these wires are connected to. You can see the silver uh, colored metal on the back there. That's uh, making a common connection. So I can put three wires in there. It joins all those three wires together. And as you can see from the multimeter, we've got no resistance at all through there, um, which is great. Well, let's just finish off with uh, one of the uh, two pole units here. So let's just lift up one of those poles. We take our uh, uh, 12 American wire gauge earth wire here. This is a solid piece of wire. Stranded, but as you can see it's very rigid. Um, stays put when you bend it. I like it. Uh, I've used this on the layout for my common 
uh, wire that connects my, all my Digitrex command control units to the PM42 boards and the BDL168s to provide that common voltage, reference voltage, uh, because you get low voltage loss with this thicker wire, so it's great. So by inserting it into the unit here, into the WIGO 221, yeah, that's, that's a great connection there. As you can see, that's not going anywhere, and we can easily see the copper strands right up to the end uh, of, the, of, the, of the little terminal block of the compact splicing connectors. So look, that was it. Uh, any questions, just post them below. I'll put some links up where you can get these. Um, I fortunately picked up a couple of free samples of them. I'm going to use them. I think they're great. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone.